Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. So I've been asked <clears throat> to do some more prepping videos. When I say more, I mean some of you that haven't been around the channel very long uh, may ask, what do you mean more? I used to do a handful of prepping videos and sort of, sort of survival and bushcraft stuff. Uh, I do a lot more than just guns, uh, guns and gear. Um, I've done a lot. Of, I've done some shelter building stuff. I've done um, tested a couple survival foods and things like that. Bug out bag, whatnot, um, blades, traps. I've done videos on that uh, sporadically here and there. Um, a lot of people do prepping videos as if as if something is very matter of fact like they'll they put forth information um, that works really well for them and it is as if it will work really well for you and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know what's best for you, that I know what your living conditions are, that I know what your physical conditions are, um, that I know what your regional conditions are, and things like that. So what I'm, I want to preface this with, this is going to be how I see things, how I see things, how I do a few things, and some of my experiences, okay? so. Hopefully, some or all of you get something out of it. Um, and even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just a little bit, hopefully it helps you out in your road to being a little bit more prepared for whatever may come. So I say for whatever may come because it just, who knows? I mean, it, there's so much crap going on. Like right now, um, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, it makes my head hurt to, to think that anybody knows what the thing is gonna be that you need to prep for. It makes my head hurt um, because nobody knows. Nobody knows. There's not even good, not even good guesses out there. Um, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that there's good guesses out there. Um, will we have a forward invasion? I don't know. Will we have uh, a massive economic collapse? Um, the, the possibility certainly seems to be there, but I don't know. Uh, we saw through a number of years, riots and um, all of these massive violent actions by the, by the left. Um, and so some of this may pertain to that as well. Uh, will we have complete societal collapse? Likely no. Um, not unless something other major thing happens that forces that societal collapse. And I don't think it's going to be a political thing that, that does that. Could be an economic thing. Could be uh, societal collapses in your general region based off of natural disasters. I went through Katrina. I went through Hurricane Katrina, I lived in Baton Rouge at the time, and I saw exactly how fast people lose their freaking minds um, when uh, daily services, uh, you know, gas, water, electric, things like that aren't available, um, power's out for an extended period of time, and uh, overcrowding happens. Uh, because I lived in Baton Rouge, a lot of people from New Orleans got shipped to Baton Rouge and things just turned into a mess. So whatever it is that happens, here are some things that I want to share with you. So first I want to talk about food. Food is going to be one of those things. Um, and I want to say that there's a lot of people that would put water first. Most of the country lives in an area where water is not hard to get naturally. Uh, moving to uh, Arizona was a horrible, horrible survival plan for me as far as that goes, um, as far as water goes. But 
most of the country lives in an environment where natural water is not far from you. Uh, whether it's water from the Great Lakes or rivers and streams and ponds and lakes in your area. The vast majority of the country is not as arid and dry and dead as the Southwest Arizona desert. So for me, water is important, but for you, it may be a secondary or tertiary thing because of the availability to you. However, food uh, is one of those things where it may not be as available, especially uh, with power outages, societal collapses, economic collapses, things like that. So food, I like dry foods. My favorite food to stock up on for the last couple years is peak and mountain house granola. Uh, it takes very little, like just that much of a 20 ounce bottle, maybe that much, maybe a little less, to put in those bags. You don't have to have any heat to cook them. Uh, they got vitamins in them, they got a little protein in them, they got a little fruit in them. Um, the peak stuff has, I think, raspberries in it or, or strawberries in it, and the uh, mountain house has blueberries in it. Uh, and then they taste good. They're very lightweight, they don't take up much room, they don't take up much water, and it takes no heat to cook them, uh, to make them. So I really have um, been paying attention to those more recently. However, I have plenty of MREs, I have plenty of canned goods, I have plenty of other things in jars like uh, rice and whatnot. Um, MREs are high calorie. They also, depending on you, they can be very sensitive to your gut or your gut can be very sensitive to them, so keep that in mind. Canned goods keep for a few years uh, they can keep for several years uh, as long as they've not been um, cracked or stored improperly. So, and various canned foods can last for longer or shorter time depending on the canned food. Uh, I have a ton of Chef Boyardee in my pantry that is up to five years old and I still eat it here and there probably a couple times a month, I'll bring a can or two out with me to the desert and it tastes just fine and I've never gotten sick from it. So um, the same thing goes for uh, like cream corn. I've eaten three or four year old cream corn out of a can that stayed just fine. Same thing with green beans, cut green beans. So that's my experiences with canned goods. Um, I think the label says three years, like the ex expiration date from when you buy it. Uh, but depending on how you store it, they can last longer. Uh, canned goods being heavy, if you need to be mobile with them. Uh, canned goods being heavy, uh, but a lot of the canned goods you don't have to cook at all. It's a ready-made meal. It may not taste the greatest not warm, uh, or you may not like it not warm, but nonetheless, you can open a can of Chef Boyardee spaghetti meatballs and eat it right out of the can with your fingers if you have to. So uh, there are advantages to that. Now, if you do have things that need warmed up or cooked or boiled, uh, I keep a lot of those small Coleman, green Coleman canisters, propane canisters at home. And I have a couple of the small, like double burner Coleman grills. Uh, those cans, if you use them sparingly and correctly, those cans can last a good, a good bit. Um, they store very easily, they're very inexpensive, uh, but they're bulky, they're big. Like you, if you have a lot of them, you have to dedicate a lot of space to them. Uh, but it is a matter of being able to cook without services coming to your house. Rice and grains, uh, keeping those, it's, uh, you tend to want to freeze them. I freeze any rice or grains that I get that I'm going to store for any extended period of time. Um, I freeze those for a day or two, uh, sometimes a week, just if I don't think about it, but I freeze those for a day or two before I can them uh, in ball mason jars. Uh, and that just helps to kill any weevil, uh, weevil eggs that are in it. Weevils are just little tiny bugs that live in grain. They're all over the place, you can't hardly avoid them. Uh, don't get freaked out about it, but it does help to kill those uh, if you can 
uh, flash freeze them or keep it frozen. Like if you want to put it in bags or, or vacuum bags and you have a deep freezer and that's how you keep it for extended periods of time, that is okay as well. Um, so when it comes to grains, just keep all that in mind. Uh, grains are a really good additive to other things. So like rice, for instance, if you have um, like some of these bucket meals, these, uh, 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 I can't even think of some of the names right off the top of my head, but uh, these meals in a bucket where it's, you got meat meals, you got vegetable meals, you got noodle meals and stuff like that, uh, that are freeze dried, uh, uh, nutrient survival stuff. You can add uh, a, a, a half a cup or something of rice to a meal like that and a meal becomes a, a meal for two very quickly uh, because of the amount of space in your gut that something like rice when it expands uh, takes up. So that's rice is, in my opinion, white rice is a good thing to keep around. Water, water can be storable almost indefinitely. Again, anytime I say store, storable when it comes to food and consumables like this, it does depend on how you store it. Uh, so like if you're storing water in a place in a not necessarily perfectly airtight container uh, and it is in a place that gets hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, um, that water is not going to store as long without bacteria growing in it than it will if you keep it cool all the time. Uh, there are ways to keep bacteria from growing in it. Um, I, I think everybody probably out there knows eight drops of bleach, like an eyedropper, eight drops of bleach for a gallon of water uh, will purify water and keep uh, bacteria from growing in it. However, bleach does lose its potency. Uh, so you do have to, you do want to cycle that water out here and there. Uh, whether you're using it for cleaning, drinking, or uh, whatever. Uh, but for as long as you keep water, you do want to cycle it through, uh, There, but there are ways to keep it from growing bacteria. I like to store water in five gallon containers that are sort of like jerry cans. Some people do it in 55 gallon drums, some people do it in 30 gallon drums, some people do it a gallon at a time. It is what it is. Some people just keep cases of water um, like that you buy at the grocery store. Um, However it is you best see fit, you do you. Again, there's too many people out there that tell you like matter of fact, this is how you gotta do it, and it's all bullshit. Uh, as far as uh, survival goes, you, water is a, a very important part of survival um, and prepping, and you can't go very long. You can go a few days uh, without water, and I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, it gets pretty nasty pretty quick. Dehydration is a son of a bitch and um, it's really hard to get out of it. It's really, really hard to get out of it. Um, some people will keep liquid IV uh, drink packs. Liquid IV is great. Uh, there are a lot of other ones. I, I keep a lot of the Cocos um, from my medic around the house, um, but either way, having some sort of a uh, coconut hydration IV mix to put in your water is probably not a bad idea, especially if you end up going a long time without it. Speaking of water additives, if you do have to purify water, and there's tons of ways to purify water, I'm not going to get into all of them. There's things you put in it, there's boiling, there's, uh, of course, there's uh, 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 filters and things like that. So you choose how you want to filter your water or purify water if you have to get it naturally. Um, a lot of water purification that is not filtration, uh, so chemical water purification, a lot of those taste like crap. And so um, things like your Crystal Light or even Kool-Aid packets, the little packets for a bottle of water are awesome to keep around. Just because, like I said, chemical uh, chemical treatment of water, uh, no matter how safe it is, uh, they generally taste like shit. Uh, guns and ammo, <laughs> you do you. I don't really care. I mean, uh, beans and bullets, I gotta have pallets of ammo. I mean, um, that's, 
is so overdone, like how much ammo should you have? I think a person should have a thousand rounds at any given point in time. And uh, honestly, I think a person should have a thousand rounds that they can shoot at any given point in time. So um, that means that at any point in time, you can pick up a thousand rounds, go to the range or go do a training day, uh, go pay for a class or something like that. And it doesn't cut into your stores, you know, your, your ammo storage. Some people keep two, three, five, ten, twenty, fifty thousand. It is what it is. Um, uh, uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you need, what you need, because I don't know what you need. I, you might only have a shotgun, and ten thousand rounds of shotgun ammo is a lot of storage space versus ten thousand rounds of twenty-two. So you, you have to decide for yourself what you need. Um, I like to keep. Uh, three to six mags just, just really depends what I can carry I've gone over that in videos before but if I can carry say three on my chest rig um, then I need to ha and then one of my gun then I need to have eight mags so double what you can carry that's minimum that's my personal opinion of minimum amount of mags loaded ready to go that a person should have um, if you don't have things like that and you're just a concealed carrier and maybe you carry a spare mag you know four to six pistol mags whatever um, again, there's, there's too much variables, too, 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 too much to go into the micro um, on that subject. Store what you think you need to store. Don't go broke doing it uh, because at the end of the day, you still have to live your life. Um, but uh, yeah, self-defense, self-defense and hunting are going could be two very, 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 very important things. Medical supplies. Uh, medical supplies, um, I keep a bunch of medical supplies at home. I can't carry them all. I do have a med bag uh, that I keep a bunch of bandages, um, wraps, uh, a, a few splints, uh, CPR mask, two CPR masks, uh, two C collars, one of the foam ones and one of the hard plastic ones. Um, medical stapler with an extra row of staples and a staple remover, uh, all sealed and, 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 and good to go. Uh, iodine, some creams, uh, cut, cut and burn creams, things like that. Um, tourniquets, tourniquets are really important. Uh, and I don't care what tourniquet you get, most of the popular tourniquets work well for what they are. I know everybody's like, you only use cats. Well, no, you don't only use cats. Cats work, SWAT T works. Um, some of these ratchet tourniquets out there work well. Rats work well. And uh, anybody who says otherwise that none of these other ones out there work well, they're just fucking idiots. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, they all work well in given scenarios and given situations. So um, it probably, probably, I know just, again, this is, I'm not telling anybody what they need to do. Uh, if you wanna have 50 cat tourniquets at home, hey, go for it. Um, if you wanna have 50 rats tourniquets at home, go for it, I don't care. Um, you, you have to decide what's best for you in every situation. Um, cat tourniquets work really well on um, all the extremities. Rats tourniquets work really well on animals and children. Uh, they work really well on arms, but they don't work really well on legs. Um, SWAT T tourniquets are a pain in the ass to use. They get very slippery with blood on your hands. Um, they don't work very well, in my opinion, on legs, but they work great on arms. Uh, they work well on lower leg um, because it's a little bit smaller appendage, but um, I don't think up here, real tight to the thigh, up near the crotch, I don't think SWAT T works as well. So there's just a bunch out there. They all have pluses and minuses. Do what you want. Uh, one of the things I think uh, people sometimes overlook are things like um, belts, suspenders. Uh, if you ever in a situation where you have to do any sort of survival for a very long amount of time, you will lose weight. I don't care how well prepared you are, you will lose weight. So belts, suspenders, you're not gonna go clothes shopping. Those might be important. Uh, also, personal items. Toothpaste, Excedrin, um, Aurigel. Uh, these are the sort of things, nail clippers. 
Uh, these are the sort of things that you have no idea how much you will miss them <laughs> until you miss them. Uh, so those are nice to have as well, as well as body sprays, body sprays and deodorant. Like you don't know what, you don't know how bad shit can be until you stink so bad that you can't stand to be around yourself. Um, so deodorants, body sprays, soaps, all good things to have. So that's all sort of the personal stuff, the stuff that is very individual to you or your family. Um, and then you get outside of that. Uh, do you have neighbors that you can count on? Do you have a group of friends that you can count on? Do you have a group of people that you train with that you can count on? The answer to that's no. Um, because understand, and this is you need to have the, the mindset that these people will be around for a while. It may be a short while, maybe a long while, but these, these people will eventually succumb to self, um, uh, self-serving, the self-serving nature of, of human beings. Uh, we all have it. We all have that um, fight or flight and there will be a point in time where you get where being your friend or training with you or surviving with you will be too cumbersome for them and they will bolt out of your life um, so you cannot argue with me all you want about it you cannot count on other people at all uh, they will no matter how much you trust them no matter how well you know them no matter how much training you've done with them, you cannot trust other people to stick around. So understand that in the long haul, you are in this on your own or your family. Um, but take advantage of, in my opinion, take advantage of the ability to have um, group, neighbor, whatever you want to call it, um, assistance, or uh, take advantage of, of, of what having a group can give you, uh, can benefit you while you can, because they won't be around, some won't be around very long, and none of them will be around forever, that's for sure. Bugging in has its own set of problems, and so does bugging out. Um, now, before the person that lives out in the middle of nowhere in the country and says, I'm perfectly safe bugging in, I'm not talking to you. Uh, because the vast majority of the country lives in city centers or urban areas. Um, if you think you will survive in your house for an infinite amount of time, in perpetuity, you won't. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but you won't. Um, one firebomb and you're out of your house and you cannot protect 360 degrees of your house at all times at all minutes and all seconds of the day you just can't so if somebody or a group of people want you out of your house or want what you have bad enough they will figure out a way to do it um, so that is the the problem with bugging in people there are so many people in these city centers and there's far more of them than there is of you and uh, you are, you have cornered yourself. I know you look at your house as a castle. This is my bunker. This is where I make my stand. And awesome, awesome. I don't want to discourage anybody from that. However, understand that um, when push comes to shove, uh, you can't protect that property in perpetuity. Uh, so there will be eventually a time, like I said, one firebomb and you're done. Uh, you no longer have that domicile. Bugging out also has risks, of course, being you can't take as much with you. I know everybody out there thinks I have this big four-wheel drive truck and I'm going to drive out to this place where I'm going to be and I'm going to live off of the pallet of ammo I have and, and I'm going to take every ounce of food and water that I have. Um, you're not, uh, you're, you're just not. Uh, if it's that bad where you have to bug out, uh, if, you, if your vehicle can even make it out of the city uh, due to roadblocks, crashes, and other various human interactions, 
Um, if your vehicle can make it out of the city, it won't be long until it can't get down the highway or down the county road or city road because of XYZ happening. And of course, you'll eventually run out of gas. Um, you can only carry so much gas in your vehicle. If you have a truck that you're relying on to pull stuff and load it up, it's probably not getting great, great gas mileage. I'm a truck guy, I know this. Um, so you're not going to, you can't have enough gas uh, or diesel to have your truck for the long haul. So understand there's going to be a point in time where it's only what you can carry. And that's not much. Um, I know you think you can. I know you've probably gone on some hikes here and there. Um, probably gone on some hikes here and there with a heavy backpack and I can carry this, that, and the other thing. Um, sure, for short periods of time, I'm sure you can. Uh, but understand that that load is going to be significantly lightened very quickly on mile 10 or whatever whatever it is you're on foot um, bugging out. If you get so far from civilization or from uh, society or, or, or the city centers that you have to live off the land, uh, now you have put yourself at a certain risk of uh, maybe eating the wrong thing, get you know, uh, various predators, whatnot. Uh, if you live too, you know, if you bug out too close to the city centers, then you have some of the same problems as as uh, you you have living in, you know, staying in the city as as in bugging in. Um, so just understand that there's there's there there is no one answer for anybody. Um, and they all have their issues. Bugging out, you're going to have far less supplies. Bugging in, you have all the supplies you want, but you'll be in a constant fight. So comms is something I haven't touched on um, because I think comms is far less useful, I'm not saying not useful, but far less useful than some of your ham bros like to claim. Um, there are people out there that think as long as they are doing some canning and have ham radio that they're pff, they're good to go. Um, if you think the radio waves will be unobstructed, I think you're wrong. However, when it comes to close communication, so family members having little CBs, you know, little radios and stuff like that, not CBs, but little handheld walkie-talkies, radios. Um, I think that uh, small handheld hams are a really good idea, but understand the limitations and understand that there does need to be somebody on the other end for it to do you any good. So I, it's, it's not just a, I have a ham radio and all of a sudden I'm talking to people. It's not how it works. Um, so if comms are something you're interested in, start learning about it because it's, it's a lot, it's, it's not as simple as you just buy a Baofeng and you're good to go. And to wrap up this probably very long video is mindset. Um, mindset's something you can't train for. You can practice it in your head all you want, uh, but until you're starving, until you're dehydrated, until you're injured and have no way of getting met, real medical attention, um, until you are in the middle of the desert living out of a backpack and you've been alone for two, three, four, five weeks a month, uh, and now you're living in your own head and going crazy, um, mindset is something you cannot actually train for. But, you do need to come to grips that you will likely, in order, in order to survive, you will likely have to do things that you are, you morally object to right now in a civilized society. Um, I'm not gonna go into details of what that may be. I'm sure most of you can figure it out, um, but uh, when it comes to you or them, 
when it comes to putting somebody out on their own that may drag you down, even though it may be a death sentence for them. But understand that you will have to do things that you morally object to today. Um, and maybe some of you don't morally object to those, some of those things uh, today, which would be a lot easier on you. But um, yeah, you'll just keep in mind that you will likely have to do things and aim at things that you would morally object to today. So that's it. That's, that's my prepping video, prepping a survival video. Uh, I'm not going to make a series out of it. I'm not going to pretend I know what's best for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend that, uh, I have all the answers. Uh, but there's some of the things that I do, some of the things that I do know, uh, some of the things that I do know what you should expect, depending on the area, region, uh, area and region that you live in, environment that you live in and so on. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've made it to the end here, I appreciate all everybody's support out there. If you got something out of this, I'm really happy that you did. Uh, if you didn't, well, I do appreciate the watch. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you later.